as well flight test crew. Here to try out a thermal imaging camera from FLIR. Instead of visible light, the FLIR sees heat radiated from different objects and translates those differences into images like this. For this video, we're going to mount the FLIR on RQ-CX3 Raven and fly around a local park after dark to demonstrate how effectively it functions as a night vision system. Do you think anyone's going to report a UFO sighting? I don't know. Let's find out. Here we are getting airborne using the FLIR as our primary FPV camera. As you can see, things look different when you're seeing them as emitted heat signatures rather than reflected visible light. Before I tried it, I was worried that it would be too disorienting to fly FPV using a thermal imager because of the whole bizarro world quality it has to it. The sky is black, day or night, and so is the ground for the most part. But people and things that absorb heat, like asphalt and concrete, glow white. To my surprise, you get used to it almost immediately. In less than a minute, Tekkenstein and I were both able to fly just like it was daytime. Of course, it helps if you know what you're looking at. The FLIR sees heat emitted by objects, then translates that into an image that our eyes can interpret. By default, the coldest thing in the frame is black, and the warmest thing in the frame is white, and temperature differences in between are represented by shades of gray. One thing that got our hearts beating a little faster when we were first flying with the FLIR was a process called Flat Field Correction, or FFC for short. This little square appears in the upper right hand corner of your view to let you know it's coming. Then, and this is the disconcerting part, the image freezes for half a second or so. Back when we were first getting started with FPV, a video glitch usually meant a crash wasn't far behind. However, this is a normal part of the camera's operation. Every so often, like maybe once a minute or so, the thermal imaging sensor has to recalibrate itself. Otherwise, the image would eventually degrade to the point it would be useless. Just to prove we weren't cheating, we mounted a GoPro 2 beside the FLIR on Raven. As you can see, it really was dark outside, and it wouldn't have been safe to fly without the thermal imager. This also gives us an opportunity to point out how visible light sources don't show up on the FLIR, unless they also generate heat. Here you can see me walking across a field, then I turn around and point a flashlight at Raven. Okay, so that's the basics of how a thermal imaging camera works. We'll be including additional FLIR footage in some of our upcoming videos, so stay tuned for that. Hope you enjoyed watching. See you next time. Alright, fly safe.